on Discovery Journal. On Discovery Journal. On June 28, 1988, 5,000 delegates gathered in the Kremlin. Gorbachev opened the conference with an all-day speech. He abandoned his plans to make Communist Party officials face elections. Instead, he proposed to bypass them. If he could not make the party democratic, he would try to bring democracy to the Soviet parliament. This will be a new body of supreme political power with elected deputies. It will be called the USSR Congress of People's Deputies. What Gorbachev was proposing would mean the erosion of party rule. The issues were the same as in the January 1987 battle over party elections. This time, however, the debates played out before thousands in the hall and millions on television. The leading characters were the same. There could be two or three candidates. As long as the local party considered them acceptable as leaders, they would be voted on, not just selected, but elected. As democracy grows, so must communist discipline. When a decision is made, party members must follow it. We propose that the conference resolutions express this. Otherwise, our party will disintegrate into empty words. Gorbachev had called the party conference to advance democracy, and the delegates used the first public forum since Perestroika was launched to ask some tough questions. Are you in favor of restricting the press so they never step out of line? Or do you want to put the press above the control of the politicians, even if it does cause trouble, as a free press can? Mikhail, listen. The people cannot be excluded from the political process. This is the main lesson of our past mistakes. What we are aiming for today is political democracy. The press has to bring the people into the political arena. One of Gorbachev's oldest friends from his hometown took him to task for being too soft on the bureaucrats. We know that you are a humane man and you want to change their ways. But the only solution is to quietly pension them off and get rid of them. Victor, let's have a chat in the presence of witnesses. Simply using the Central Committee to remove the bureaucrats doesn't work. If we sack one of your men, or even one of mine, it's no good. We've seen what happens before when we try to do too much from above. It simply doesn't work. The leadership gave the delegates free reign. But on the fourth and final day, one subject had still not been mentioned. Yeltsin was sitting in the balcony. I was in the center. He was to my left. Then suddenly, during the session, he appeared in the back of the hall. He walked down the aisle and sat in the front row. Every eye was on him now, and no one was listening to the speaker anymore. Suddenly, he made a dash for the platform. Sit down, Boris. Wait, wait a bit. We'll work something out. Boris Yeltsin has the floor. For the benefit of those who had missed it, an unrepentant Yeltsin re-ran the Newsnight interview. When I was asked if Perestroika would have moved faster without the presence of Comrade Ligachev, I said yes. Perestroika should have begun with the party. The party would have led society. But the party can't keep up with perestroika. After 20 minutes of hard-hitting diatribe, Yeltsin came to the question on everyone's mind. 
Comrade delegates, a delicate matter. It's a question of my own political rehabilitation. After the Central Committee meeting in October 1987, if you think time does not permit, so be it. That's all I can say. I think we should stop treating the Yeltsin affair as a secret. Let Boris Yeltsin say what he wants. Then we can all have our say. Please, Boris. I deeply resent what was done to me. I asked the conference to withdraw the resolution against me. I asked you to rehabilitate me before the party. Yes, the road to reform is a difficult one, but we've begun our journey, and destiny tells us we must continue on this road and no other. Yeltsin had thrown down the gauntlet to the conference and to Ligachev personally. It was fascinating to watch Ligachev. He had the leer of the hungry wolf ready for the kill. He stood at the podium to loud applause. Everyone knew that revenge was in the air. An anticipating smile played on his lips as he walked to the platform. He looked very confident, as if he were rolling up his sleeves, and everyone waited for him to tear Yeltsin apart. Hard to believe, but it's a fact. Yeltsin sat silent in the Politburo. Hours of crucial discussions went by, and he took no part at all. He just bided his time and let others tackle the problems. Sounds outrageous, but it's a fact. Is that party comradeship, my friend Boris? I was expecting his speech. I knew he would speak. Not everything he said was incorrect. But on the whole, it showed that you, Boris, are wrong. 